So for problem number 12, we have that six joules of work is needed to stretch a spring from 10 to 12 centimeters, and another 10 joules is needed to stretch it from 12 to 14 centimeters. And they're asking us, what is the natural length of the spring? So what we have here is that some a spring with a natural length L, which we don't know what it is, and then it's first stretched from 10 to 12 centimeters. However, we can't really put 10 centimeters as our lower boundary because we don't know how much it was stretched to begin with to get to 10 centimeters. So for example, what if L to begin with were two centimeters? It means that to go from 10 to 12, you're actually stretching it from eight centimeters to 10 centimeters, right? Um, what if L were five centimeters instead? Then to stretch it from 10 to 12, you're actually stretching five, five centimeters because from five to 10 is five all the way out to seven centimeters because from five to 12 is seven. So what we have to do here is we have to consider that for the first boundary, 10 centimeters, um, we can maybe call this here A, we have that L, which we don't know, plus A, which we don't know as well. This whole thing here is going to be 10 centimeters. And then um, to, to find the upper boundary 12, what we have here is that L plus B, which is the upper boundary, so we're going to call this B, which we don't know, the sum of this whole thing here is 12 centimeters, right? So what we're going to do here is since the work is given by the integral from A to B of K times X dx, um, we have that L plus A is going to be equal to 10 centimeters. And we're working here with metric, so we have to use meters. And 10 centimeters, if we convert it to meters, that's 0 0.1. And so if we just isolate A, which is the thing that we want to plug into the lower boundary, we have that A is actually going to be equal to 0 0.1 minus L. And similarly, um, if we take this second situation here, we have that L plus B, so the actual amount that we're stretching in the upper boundary is 12 centimeters. So we're going to say that L plus B is 0 0.12 meters. And then to isolate B, we just subtract L from both sides. So B is going to be equal to 0 0.12 minus L. So right now we have an, an expression here for the lower boundary and an expression for the upper boundary, right? So uh, that actually tells us the amount that we're stretching it to begin with and to end with. So we're ready to plug that in. So instead of putting A down here, we're gonna say that this is 0 0.1 minus L, and the upper boundary, instead of putting B, we're gonna say that this is 0 0.12 minus L, and the amount of work to, to go from 10 to 12 is six joules. So instead of putting work, we can just say that this is equal to six joules, right? Um, so that's it for our first integral, and now we need to set up our second integral. Um, so our second integral here is it takes 10 joules to stretch it from 12 to 14 centimeters. So W is going to be equal to the integral of kx dx, where it begins at A and ends at B. But now in this situation, A, which is the lower boundary, is 12 centimeters. So L plus A, this whole thing is 12 centimeters, so 12 centimeters. And B, so L plus B, so the upper boundary is 14 centimeters. So L plus B, this whole thing is going to be 14 centimeters. And so if we set up our equation here, we have that L plus A is equal to 12 centimeters. So L plus A is equal to 12, which is 0.12 meters, right? And so if we isolate um, A, we have that A is equal to 0.12 minus L. And similarly, L plus B is equal to 14 centimeters for the upper boundary. And so we have that L plus B is equal to 0 0.14 meters. And therefore, B is going to be equal to 0 0.14 minus L. So now we also have another expression for the upper boundary. And for the lower boundary of this new integral, which has 10 joules of work, so we can replace that. So instead of W, we'll put 10 is equal to the integral from A, the lower boundary, which as we've seen, it's 0.12 minus L. So it's gonna be 0.12 minus L. And the upper boundary is going to be 
0.14 minus L. So that's going to be 0.14 minus L. Um, all right. So once we're here, let me just erase all of this. What we can do here is we can, we can, actually we're going to integrate it first because even though you could join this into a single integral, I feel like it's going to be more intuitive if we just integrate this first. So on the first integral, we have that if we take this antiderivative, it's just k, which is a constant. The antiderivative of x is x squared over 2. And then we just have to plug in the boundaries. So it goes from 0.12 minus L all the way out to 0.14 minus L. And that's going to be the same thing as I'm going to put k over 2 outside because it's a constant. And so we do the upper boundary squared minus the lower boundary squared. So that's going to be 0.14 uh, minus L squared minus the lower boundary, which is going to be um, 0 0.12 minus L squared. So that's the so that's the integral for 10 joules. Now let's do the integral for 6 joules. So similarly, they're going to have the same antiderivative, so kx squared divided by 2. But now the boundaries are going to go from 0 0.1 minus L to 0 0.112 minus L. So we factor out the k over 2, and we do the, the upper boundary squared, so 0 0.12 uh, minus L squared minus the lower boundary squared, so minus 0 0.1 minus L squared. Um, and so this here is the, let me highlight this, this is the expression that's worth, um, that's equal to 10 joules, right? That's worth 10 joules, and this expression here is going to be equal to 6 joules. So what we can do here is... So I've put the equations here side by side, and we have two equations and two unknowns. So the unknowns are k and l, but because we have two equations, we are able to solve this. So we're going to have to expand and simplify everything, and we can begin um, just by getting the rid of this 2 on the denominator. So for the equation, for the first equation, we multiply both sides by 2. So that's going to be 20 is equal to just k. So that over 2, that disappears, k. And same thing on the second equation, we multiply both sides by 2. So 12 is going to be equal to, and then we get rid of this 2 on the denominator. So 12 is equal to k times all of this stuff. So once we're here, what we have to do is we have to expand each of these equations so that we can simplify it. Um, so for for this one over here, let's expand the um, right-hand side. So we have that 20 is going to be equal to k times, and we're going to have to FOIL this. So we have 0.14 minus L squared. So if we FOIL that, that's L squared. And then minus 0.14 times L times 2. So minus 0.28 L. And then plus 0.14 squared plus 0.14 squared. And then minus this whole thing FOILed. So minus L squared. So minus L squared. Um, and that's going to be so minus 2 times 0.112, which would be minus. Um, minus 0.24L, but then with this minus here that distributes to it, it's going to be plus. So that's going to be plus um, 0.24L, and then minus 0.112 squared. So minus 0.12 squared. Okay. So once we're here, um, we also need to expand the second one. So for the second equation, we have that 12 is going to be equal to k times 0.112 minus L squared. We've just done that. That's going to be L squared. And then 0.112 times L times 2 with a minus, so minus 0.24L. And then plus 0.112 squared, so plus 0.112 squared. And you can see that it's exactly what we have here, but it's just now it's positive because we don't have that minus. And then minus 0.112. 0 0.01 minus L squared. So then minus L squared, um, and that's going to be minus minus, so plus 0.2L, so plus 0.2L, and that's going to be minus 0.1 squared, so minus 0.1 squared. Let me close that. All right, so once we're here, we can then go ahead and simplify this. So for the first equation, we have 20 is equal to K 
times. Um, so this L squared minus L squared, they cancel out, right? This minus 0.28L plus 0.24L, that's going to give us um, minus 0.04L. And then we have 0.14 squared minus here. So 0.14 squared minus 0.12 squared. Um, let me put that in my calculator. So it's 0.14 squared minus 0.12 squared is going to give us, um, that's going to give us 13 over plus 13 over 2,500. So plus 13 over, oops, 13 over 2,500. So that's the first equation. And the second equation, we're going to have 12 is equal to k times. So same deal here. The L squared cancels out with the minus L squared. And then we have um, minus 0.24L and then plus plus 0.2L. So that's going to be minus 0.04L. So that's going to be minus 0.04L. And then what we have here is 0.12 squared minus 0.1 squared. So let me put that in my um, in my calculator. So let's see, that's 0.12 squared minus 0.1 squared. And that's going to give us plus 11 over 2,500. Plus 11 over 2,500, right? Um, so what we can do here is let's distribute this. So we have that. 20 is going to be equal to minus k times 0.04L and then plus 13k over 2500. So that's the first equation. And the second equation is going to be um, 12 is equal to minus k times 0.04L and then plus 11k over 2500. So what we can do here is we can add these equations. So adding the left hand side 20 plus 12 that gives us 32 is going to be equal. I meant sorry, I meant subtract these equations because we want to get rid of this minus k. So if we subtract these, we do 20 minus 12, so that's going to be 8 is equal to minus k times 0.04L minus minus k times 0.4L. So these are going to cancel out because it's going to be minus plus. So that's going to go zero. And then if we're subtracting this, so 13k over 2500 minus 11k over 2500, that's just going to give us um, plus 2k over 2500. So remember that we subtracted these two equations here. So 20 minus 12, 8. Um, this minus k times 0 0.04 minus minus itself is plus, it cancels out, and then 13k over 2500 minus 11k over 2500 is 2k over 2500. And now to solve it out, we just do 8 times 2500 divided by 2 is equal to k. So that's going to be, let's see, 8 over 2, that's going to be 4 times 2500 is equal to k, which therefore means that k is going to be equal to 10,000. So we found our first unknown, which is the value of k, right? And once we have once we have found that, we can plug it back into either of these equations. Um, either of it work out. So maybe let's do it with the with the first one. So once we have this, we have that 20 is equal to minus k. So minus 10,000, 10,000 times 0.04L. And then plus 10,000 times 13 divided by 2,500. So plus 13 times 10,000 divided by 2,500. Um, and so once we're here, we can just simplify things out. So we're going to have that 20 is going to be equal to, so let's see, we have minus 10,000, uh, so 10,000, and then times 0 0.04. So that's going to be minus 400L, and then plus, so these two zeros cancel out, so that's going to be 13, um, 13 times 100, let's see, that's going to be 13 times 100 divided by 25, so plus 52. And once we have this, we do 20 minus 52 is equal to minus 400L. 
And so we do 20 minus 52, that's going to be minus 32 is equal to minus 400L. And finally, we just divide it out, so 32 divided by 400 is equal to L, which is the same thing as, let's see, 32 divided by 500, which is the same thing as 2 divided by 25. So 2 divided by 25 meters, right? Because we are in metric. Um, so maybe let me re rewrite this, make it a little bit neater. So then we have that 32 divided by 400 is equal to L. So 2 over 25 is equal to L. And in decimals, that's going to be uh, L is equal to 0 0.08 meters. So that is our final value for L. Um, and we did this by solving the system of equations here with the two integrals. And that is it for problem number 12.